Did you lose or leave your job and you have less than six months of money available? Do you have tech experience, but you're not sure what you should do in order to whether you should find a new job or to do a startup or try to figure out a way as someone with tech experience to get a field in technology? Well, in this video, I'm gonna go through the steps that you should be taking. A, if you have tech experience. B, if you have or live next to a major city. C, if you have a good computer where you can actually leverage for building whatever you need to build. And then D, if you have a small network. So let's get started and go through some of the steps. So step one, one thing I always say that you should do or everyone should do is kind of to get started on LinkedIn. You need to get on LinkedIn. You need to have your profile established and you need to stand out. Um, in the description below, I'll actually put a couple of links to some things that can help you, some resources that can help you become better at LinkedIn. But a few things that you can do right off the bat is, A, make sure you have a solid profile picture. Get your picture up there and that looks good and professional so people can actually notice and find you. And then the next thing you can do is actually focus on some of the highest value um, expertise or levels of expertise that you have. And, and the experience that you have. And how you do that is by, and within LinkedIn, they have ways you can post projects, they have ways that you can actually list out, of course, the jobs that you've been at before, volunteer service. So think through all of those options on LinkedIn and make sure that you've updated them to reflect the type of role you're looking for, or as we'll talk about shortly, the startup that you're trying to build, right? If you're building a startup in Web3, you should have experience in Web3. If you're building a startup in mobile, you should have your mobile experience and your references and stuff reflecting of that. So thinking through what your LinkedIn profile looks like is very important, but also making sure you actually have a LinkedIn profile up there that's reflective of who you are as a person. The next thing that you should do is build a website. I always recommend having a personal website and establishing a personal brand outside of just your business brand. Why? Because you're you. You should own who you are. You should own your name. You should own your essence online. And you want to make sure that you have the right um, information, the right reflection of who you are across all mediums, and that you own the rights to your name online. So if your name is Jack Bob, you should try to get jackbob.com. If your name is... Uh, Larry, right? And you don't, and you have a, a, you know, Larry, the, the painter man, you should try to own that and make sure that you are um, owning that across the different mediums. So that means that you should think through, okay, what are some ways that I would do? That would be Twitter. That would be, uh, um, again, LinkedIn. That would be Instagram. So you want to make sure that you kind of think through those social profiles that you want to be active on and try to at least reserve and own those yourself because most of those are free, right? I know getting the domain name has a cost to it. It's really inexpensive. Usually if you go to GoDaddy at one of those type of registers, and I'll leave a link in the description below, but if you go to one of those type of registers, um, it's usually really expensive, like 20 bucks to, to reserve that type of name, right? The other side of that though is the hosting. Some of the hosts that you choose actually will allow you to reserve the name through them, so it'll be even less expensive for you to do that. So I'll leave a description. I, I recommend SiteGround, but you know you don't have to, or HostGator, I've used those too. So I'll leave a description for those as well. But make sure that you own and, and, and decide on what your branding and name should be and what type of um, um, information that you're gonna present. Because if you don't own it, someone else could take it, especially as you try to do other things like building up your LinkedIn profile. So. Um, so another thing that you should look at doing is actually trying to choose one platform outside of LinkedIn and figure out how you're going to dominate it, right? So this is, again, referring back to owning your essence, but the, the, depending on what you're trying to do, like if you're trying to actually get a job, then you want to make sure that you kind of present your way in a particular way that's kind of job related. But if you're trying to start a, a business, then you not only want to own your name, but you want to own the startup name and you got to figure out what is that branding. But Think about which profile you want to own, Just, I mean, which social media platform you want to own. Focus on one, right? Especially, you know, initially, because if I said you have short or limited money to start off with, you don't want to be spread too thin. You want to own LinkedIn, and then you want to choose one. I personally have chosen Twitter in the past, and I've grown that up some, and Instagram is another one that I've looked at growing, um, which is very important. But Twitter is more business-related. Instagram is more social. So depending on what you're trying to do as a 
as a creator and, and as a as building your brand, then that's the one that you will decide what to do. But I'll put a link. I think the three that I've personally look at are um, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, YouTube. I think that's very important if you're actually building out your business, depending on what you're doing, and um, and Twitter, and then TikTok. So those are the four. I said three, but that's four. So those are the ones that you should probably look at and try to figure out what you should do. All right, so so now you have your LinkedIn profile set up, you have your personal branding set up, you have your social media branding set up. The next thing you should do is hit the major job boards, right? Make sure that you have your representation of who you are on those job boards. Me personally, I actually set up an email um, with job at my last name because I own that domain name, or my not my last name, but my name, dot com, right? And the reason I do that is that that way it's very specific. I'm going for a job. I know when I apply and you reply, you know that I'm looking for a job. So I put job at and then my name dot com. Right. And I set up all my profiles on that. So me personally, I get a, a enormous amount of emails from recruiters or from these job boards or from um, if I go to uh, and we'll talk about going to company sites and signing up there and registering there and, and uploading um, your information there. So I make sure that um, I, I, I am pretty much overrun in that particular email with a lot of job opportunities specific to my skill set. So you want to make sure that you set up your, your email, you start applying to these job boards. Um, I'll recommend some, but I think some to recommend are like I, I've done Career Builder, I've done Indeed, I've done Monster Jobs. So you want to actually list out, I can give you a, probably a top five, maybe I'll do a separate video on that. But I would choose four or five and make sure that not only am I registered for them, but that my profile is up to date. Um, decide on whether you want to have some type of image or photo there. Make sure you have your up to date resume, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And then making sure that you know that you're getting you're setting up job alerts. You're getting your um, your your connection to your one email, which for me is job at my domain name. And then you're constantly going through and, and paying attention to that. Because what's going to happen is that once you do that, once you have your, your profile set up at LinkedIn, once you have your social media set up and you create these job boards, recruiters are going to reach out to you. So then at that point, that's our next step, is as you set up this job board, is that you want to actually go through and make sure you make connections to recruiters. You can do that through LinkedIn, right? So you're on LinkedIn, they have all these job postings, so you can go through and post and apply for jobs. But you should really actively be looking within LinkedIn for recruiters at the locations or jobs that you are interested in. So if you're interested in working for Google or Microsoft or Fang, you want to make sure that you have one recruiter for each one of those that you're working actively working with. And if you have um, certain um, 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 opportunities for yourself, like if you're an underrepresented person, for example, you know, you should be looking for the underrepresented diversity recruiter. You know what I mean? If you're focused on a particular area of expertise, which could be cloud computing or or um, any type of building up of uh, mobile applications or whatever, you need to find that recruiter that has that niche and get a list of those and build up a list of recruiters. I recommend having at least 15 to 20 recruiters at the top companies that you are that you care about. And you can do that through LinkedIn. Um, so one thing, just to circle back to LinkedIn, one recommendation that I have is I actually recommend paying, I think it's like 50 bucks to pay for, 50 bucks a month to pay for the advanced access to LinkedIn. Why? You can see who's viewing your profile. You can actually put up there that you're looking for a role and you can actually um, and find out there's more insights and engage, um, engaging analytics. So I definitely recommend that. I've been paying for that. To me, it's a write-off, I think, as well, because you're looking for it, depending on what you're doing. I'm doing it for business as well, so I can write it off. But as you think through that, you want to make sure that you're actually looking and promoting yourself as best you can on these platforms. And as you do that in LinkedIn, and you connect your LinkedIn to these different job boards, like I said, the career builders and monster boards, stuff like that, you'll start to see momentum build up with the types of recruiters and people reaching out to you and type of job offers. And trust me, you'll be you'll be inundated with a lot of jobs depending on your skill set, especially in technology, right? So the next thing that I would look at is once I've got all that stuff set up, now I'm looking in my area or the area that I want to work or the area that I want to build my startup. And I'm actually connecting to some of the local tech um, um, people who are in that area. 
So that could be technical meetups. I would go to meetup.com and try to find some meetups there. That could be startups and incubators and accelerators. I would check and see what incubators and accelerators are in my area. And I would try to connect and make sure that I'm in, in, invested in those communities. And I've actually gone to some events and I've talked with some people who are part of those communities. So I would look at that. If there are certain um, um, top companies that I'm interested in, they're usually handling having events. I would actually go ahead and participate in those events and go and meet people and try to see if I can engage them. Now, that's not for everyone. Not everyone's a social person. Not everyone's very um, engaged, especially in the technology field. But um, I do recommend, despite that, at least going to the meetings and being in the room, even if you're not a very social person. So that way you can actually see and hear what they're looking for in people. And you may find out about certain job opportunities or certain things that are happening in your area just by at least attending some of the events. I know that's a challenge, especially, you know, I'm more of a uh, I'm on the middle of an introvert and an extrovert. So I understand the challenges from both sides of it. But you definitely need to engage. You definitely need to talk to people or at least be in the room, even if you're not going to um, be um, actively talking to people. So so I recommend doing that once you got all your stuff set up, because then you can, at that point, share your information. Here's my LinkedIn. Here's my projects that I'm working on. This is my website. This is how people see what you're capable of. They find out who you are. And even if you're not engaging, even if you just come in and leave, print out some business cards with your, with your QR code on there and sit it in the room, someone may pick it up. It gives you more of an opportunity so that way they can actually get a hold of you and find out more about you, right? So networking, going to these technical meetups, going to different startup events, going to accelerators and incubators, going to um, um, local companies that are you're interested in working for events, um, that are related around technology or teaching or learning and meeting people is, is, is one of the things that's very important, right? Second part of that, though, which if you want to go to the next level, especially with Meetup, is just volunteer. Volunteer to assist the organizer. Volunteer to help out with events. Why? Because if there are people who are coming to speak, if there's events that are happening, you can then now get connected and invested into that community and you'll get your name known, right? You want people to kind of find out about you. And so how they find out about you is about if you're engaging, talking with them, if you're doing projects, showing the projects, if you're a part of volunteer work that actually is successful, volunteering, if there are other startups and other things going on within the community that you're participating in and showing how you, how you created it, that adds value to you and your brand and your name and people can see what's going on with you. So be active, be active and try to find out more about that. The next thing that I would recommend is find local nonprofits that you can engage with and help with and assist with, right? Especially from a technology standpoint. Trust me, there's so many people, as you know, as a technologist, your family, everyone kind of, hey, you know tech, come and help me with my computer, help me with my Wi-Fi, come and do, yes, there, that, that's, it's challenging at times because you don't know everything in tech, but everyone just labels it as tech. But I say for you, one of the things that definitely helps is trying to actually find some, uh, especially if you don't have uh, big projects or major projects that you've developed in the past, like if you're in a lower, uh, lower end on, on experience, contact some nonprofits in your area, look at some of the events that are going on in your area and talk with some of the nonprofits, whether it's your local church, or whether it's the, you know, like I said, the YMCA or, or any other, there's a, there's a lot of nonprofits that are available and they need a lot of things. They need, they need to update, someone to update their website. They need someone to help them, especially churches, help them with some IT um, help in their area. And you can not only find out and help and volunteer, some of them will let you, will pay you for doing that. Like I've worked with local churches in the past and they'll pay me for doing the work and it's just an hourly rate and that's great. And, and you just kind of do, you know, you balance what you want to charge them for and what stuff that you want to do for free. Now you want to actually make sure that you're going more on the charge end of things um, if you can, because you want to show your value and they know that you're worth something. And so they're mostly the time they're willing to do that. So you want to make sure you're doing that. But the reason that you're doing that is to, again, make connections, again, your name out there, and, and also being able to just give some, get some experience, some more things to add to your portfolio, and to build up your network, to build up a wider tech network. Because trust me, if you're out here and you're in technology and you're not finding roles or you're not hearing things of, uh, that you need, it's because you haven't built up your network enough. Because in your technology, there's, a, there's a, a, a strong need for technologists 
or people who are doing stuff within technology. So, so you're, that, that means that you're not getting out there enough so that way people can find out you're available and see the good works that you do, right? So um, the next thing that I would recommend, especially if you're trying to launch a startup, is to look at how do you, um, um, what are the areas that you as a startup are focused on? So let's say you're doing a startup around, centered around doing a web application, low code web application, right? So you need to figure out what are those areas that, that are technologies that are involved that you will need for building up the solution within your startup, where are you targeting? And we can have a whole nother video just specifically on how to create a startup. But if you're going down that startup path, you definitely need to outline what are the technology areas that you're focused on, look at some air, uh, the incubators and accelerators and things that are going on in your area, area and get in, and connected with them. Um, as well as to the next step of that is looking at applying for grants and applying for um, um, fellowships and scholar not, not fellowships, but more like um, incubators and and um, there's just a lot of um, um, diversity grants and local um, local grants. There's, there's a lot of things that are in your area that you need to focus to. So you need to kind of as you're going through these networking stand um, um, situations and as you're going through um, connecting with meetups so that you need to be looking and seeing what opportunities are available for people who are starting their own companies, right? So for startups specifically, I just wanna make sure that I have this section in video is looking at, these are the things you should do for launching your own startup, right? A, search and apply for grants. Specifically local grants, um, there's certain areas of the country, like for example, in Atlanta, they have like, a, um, invest in Atlanta grant and they have all these different things in certain areas. So there you have to look at it from both us, uh, from a from a local or a city county area to a state area to um, a country area. So don't skip, don't just focus on one area because there are different grants and different opportunities at each level. So you want to make sure you're exploring each level as you're searching for grants, scholarships and, and things of that nature. You want to join and check out the Small Business Association in your area. Um, for in Atlanta, there's a place called uh, something called SCORE that helps out small businesses and helps them get um, get information and new uh, just opportunities to connect, even mentorship and things of that nature to help grow their business. So you definitely want to focus on finding um, those things that are going on in your area and seeing how you can get engaged and get involved. You want to check with your local chamber of commerce and kind of get connected with them. Um, I, I, again, you want to actually, you know, Kind of get connected with your community at one like i said local state and then government right the next thing that you want to do is actually look at um what are some areas that you can register for where you get free resources when you're connected to an incubator or accelerator there are a lot of companies that offer credits as well as um financial um, um money or, or or help in learning about certain aspects of the business um, of your business or way, areas of your business that are connected to incubators. They're just higher, you, you get higher funds. Like for example, let me give you an example, AWS. AWS, if you actually place your money in certain, um, in certain uh, banks, right? Or if you're connected to a particular accelerator or you register, like for example, the NVIDIA Inception program or, or some of those other startup programs, when you're connected to them, you actually get um, ability to get additional credits from AWS for cloud services. So for AWS, for example, I recently got $5,000 in credits because my, um, I, I leveraged um, Brex Bank for um, putting in some of the money that we got for our funding or for our startup. So I put my money in Brex and Brex has a relationship with AWS and a few other of these startup um, um, uh, not incubators, but basically startup opportunities um, for different companies that they offer different companies if you are a startup, right? So Brex has these relationships and AWS is one of them. So I signed up and I was able to get it. In the past, I've been with NVIDIA and with the Atlanta Tech Village and a few other places, a few other incubators that are looking for help startups. And I've gotten $100,000 in credits before. So you can get a lot of money that's tied to startups and that's tied to um, cloud credits and stuff. It's not necessarily cash, 
but it helps you reduce the cost that you need for your startup. It helps you reduce the amount of money you need to spend on cloud services and all these different things like Twilio and all these different things that you're thinking about using for building up your startup. You want to work sure you're paying attention and you're involved in these programs so that way it reduces your costs, right? Because again, if you have low money and you're leaving your role, your job, and you don't know when your startup is going to get funding, you want to take advantage of all these opportunities. And I'll try to leave some of these links in the description or, or, or below so that way you can find them, right? The other thing that I recommend, whether you're doing a startup or whether you're actually um, just going out on your own looking for a job, is that in the interim between you leaving your role or you losing your job and trying to find a new job, I recommend participating in hackathons. Hackathons are a great way to actually get exposure to other people in the industry, to not only just, just developers, other developers, but also other companies that are seeking people who are innovative and engaging in hacking of, uh, uh, sorry, engaging, but, but kind of interested in actually um, developing and coding. And and, this, and like I said, I, I look at developing coding because you think hackathon, you go, I'm going to code something. You don't necessarily have to code something for every hackathon. Some some hackathons look for project managers and, 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 and you can kind of uh, get with the group and just manage the project. And some are looking for, you know, um, people who are doing database or doing blockchain or doing, there's so many different areas. So I recommend signing and finding a hackathon. Why? I think there's mutual, there's, there's double benefits. One, or there's a lot of benefits, but let's go with the top three. So one, like I said, is connecting with people, being able to connect with people who are developing like you and thinking like you, as well as leaders in the industry. Two is that you can actually, um, with the hackathon, win money. <laughs> so it's like the obvious. So why wouldn't you um, try to at least uh, uh, engage and win money? Most of these hackathons, like, you know, they're giving out multiple prizes. And so let's say that, like, for example, DevPost is a good example. Dev Post may have a hackathon where there are like 20 prizes and maybe 300 people are, are, are participating in the hackathon, right? So you almost have like a 10% chance of winning a prize. Now you're assuming that all 300 are gonna submit projects. Most of them don't because they're just, they're doing multiple hackathons, they got a lot of stuff going on. So there may be like 50 projects that get submitted. So you could have had a 50% chance of winning some money almost with, by, by participating in a hackathon, right? So, you know, I recommend doing it. I think it's great. It gives you, like I said, it gives you, um, the third thing is that experience as well, especially if you're looking at to sh a way to show off that you're, that you're building things, that you know how to code, you connect it to your GitHub, um, and you show some of your coding example if you're a coder, or if you're doing project management, you can show how you led a project and you can show some of the examples and add that to your website. So I, I think that you know, participating in hackathons is a great way to get that experience, have an opportunity to win money and make connections, right? So I definitely recommend that. So uh, the next thing, I know there's a lot of stuff going here, but I just wanna make sure I cover it all. Uh, the next thing I would look at is, um, I would try to actually find um, a low cost um, developer platform where there's an opportunity to connect to people, um, or connect to the person who's actually running it, or um, that, that, that has some form of um, opportunity to form a relationship and get big returns. Let me give you an example. Like Roblox right now, if you want to build a Roblox game, it's a free, low-cost platform that you can engage with and try to build a game. So I would try to, you know, um, try to engage. Or I'm not sure if actually Roblox, maybe there may be a cost for Roblox, I got to check, but um, there are some that are free. And you go out there, you invest, or, or they're low cost. Like, you know, Apple is 99 bucks. Google developer is 25 bucks, if I remember right. Um, and I would kind of look at that as an opportunity to, again, I, I'm looking at layers. So I would say, okay, if I'm doing a hackathon, it's on gaming, I would use the Roblox platform and build my hack so that way I can deploy it and I have an opportunity to win money at the same time, an opportunity to, to make money off of Roblox as I, if I build it and it's successful. So I would look at layers, ways to layer things, and I would apply for the Roblox grant. So then now I have three different layers of opportunity to, to generate some, some revenue for myself or to kind of uh, kick off my startup if that's the path I'm going. And if I'm not going that path for startup, I'm showing experience if game development is the area that I'm going in. So you have to be intentional on how you choose some of these opportunities. So that's one, one example. Um, Unity, is, from a gaming standpoint, I would look at some opportunities there. Um, I would pay attention to some of the newer 
technologies that are coming out and look for where they have developer programs to actually help them um, build things on their platform. Like for example, um, when the iPhone first came out, they were looking for developers. And so if you're one of the early developers, you got early access and you were able to um, get kind of someone to help you. You were able to get your games deployed faster and easier. So there's a lot of ways where you can actually engage and, and get some opportunities. Um, YouTube Shorts is a recent example. YouTube Shorts, when it first came out, if you put up Shorts, they were pushing it, man, and they were trying to get more exposure for you. Now a lot of people are doing it, but in those first few months when it came out, there was a great opportunity for you as a, as a content creator or a developer or someone who's looking for a, a different role to get exposure, right? So you gotta pay attention to what's going on in the tech industry. Pay attention, like, uh, like right now, Threads just came out. So look at some of the newer things that come out and see if there's opportunities to um, engage, right? with these social media platforms. TikTok has like a, a black business um, um, owner uh, option. Um, I know I've done stuff with Twitter and I've done things. So there's opportunities out there. You just have to be uh, aggressive and active and looking for them. And I would try to leverage those low cost or free platforms and areas to get exposure and to actually gain some um, expertise as you're sharing that with what you're doing with some of the, the, the people that you're trying to connect with, right? So, so, uh, so we've gone through a few things as a startup and as a, um, um, a look for an employee looking for employment. So another thing that I would look at too is that if, okay, so you don't want to do all of that. You're looking for, well, how do I in the interim um, build up or connect with um, some, some other, in some other ways? And I don't really want to do a startup and I'm looking for employment. It's taking a while. How can I generate some income? So uh, next two things are kind of centered around that. One is actually starting a coaching course, right? I, you know, I think there's Kajabi and there's a couple of these platforms. If you have expertise and you want to share that expertise, you don't mind recording some videos on what you're doing. And YouTube is not enough because YouTube, it takes a long time to get monetized. If you don't get subscribers and all that type of stuff, you can look at starting a coaching course. Now, you're still going to have to have some networking experience. You have to have some web design experience and so, or some design experience in general. And we can talk about that maybe using Fiverr and a few other things. But you can start a coaching course around that expertise and start shopping that around, right? You can, you know, if you have an email list or you have some friends and, you know, they don't mind paying you, you know, you can start shopping that around and having and sharing that within the industry, especially if you have networking, like strong, big industry connections or, or you're, you are already established on LinkedIn. You have a lot of companies that you've worked with in the past. Just start a small coaching course centered around your area of expertise, right? So that's one thing. The other thing you can do is that what I... I'm always signed up for is there's a lot of like research and survey and all these different companies that are looking for people with technical or um, industry expertise to join these panels and to join and to show um, some of their area of expertise uh, within these research surveys and to get and they pay money. So I'll, you know, you'll get money from like, you'll get Amazon gift cards and you'll get like, there's some that'll pay real money. Like I've done surveys and research um, participations before in the past, where I've gotten 200 to $500 just for my level of ex experience. I'm, I'm well experienced in technology. So I would sign up for those things and make sure that I'm registered and make sure that I can find, um, get these opportunities sent to me because I, again, you want to have these ongoing. So you want to make sure you sign up and register for these different ones. I'll see if I can find something to put in the description below. But um, a lot of it's just done through, again, connections through LinkedIn because there's people who will reach out to me or by having your information out there in, in, in the social world. And they'll usually reach out and say, hey, we got these research um, um, grant, uh, research um, opportunities. Would you like to participate? Right. Um, Another thing that's kind of alongside of that is speaking engagements, right? If you are comfortable talking and comfortable getting in front of a crowd, um, there are a lot of opportunities at all these different technical conferences and 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 um, just local events and local uh, meetups and stuff where you can get out there and present and speak. So I would recommend doing that and then coupling that with the small pamphlet or ebook that's kind of centered around your level of expertise. Now, if you have a coaching course as well, you can kind of couple it with that as well. So inexpensive, you know, put it on um, Amazon and do like a $10 book or do something like that. So there's, that's a whole nother discussion about how you can do that. But, um, you know, speaking engagements and, and getting in front of people and talking and participating in these 
sometimes they'll fly you out to these conferences for free. So if you can't, you can't afford to go to uh, uh, GDC or you can't afford to go to WWDC or one of some of these bigger conferences, technical conferences, there's opportunities to, to go as a presenter. And sometimes they'll pay for the conference for you. You may have to pick up your your airfare or something like that. Or sometimes they'll pay your airfare, depending on how good of a speaker you are. So you you look at these as an engagements and opportunities for you to, to when you're, again, looking for a low-cost way of doing things, for you to engage and find opportunities to, to get your, your face and your name out there, right? And then, um, I mean, I, I think those are the main things. I, I think finally, one of the things that I would look at is look at the main trends right now and see what opportunities are out there. Right now, generative AI is a huge thing. What are you doing from AI standpoint, right? Are you, and what area are you focused in? There's a lot of areas that are focusing with AI. It could be music, there could be art, there could be um, just content creation. So there's a lot of opportunities. You wanna master chat GPT? Are you gonna build something that connects and builds an APIs with a low code solution and show that you can build that API? Because a lot of companies are looking for ways to, I've seen them, every company now has a little connection to chat GPT or something where they're doing AI tools for their business. So building up examples around that, exploring those things, because that's popular right now. That before the metaverse was popular, so you you know so at that time you could focus on the metaverse. So paying attention to what's happening in the industry, engaging in those things because that way you know that as you're you know as you're looking for opportunities and as you're waiting for your next big thing, you're working towards and building something that's going to help you um, as a as a developer or as a technical um, expert in your field. So anyway. I just want to thank you. Thank you for, I know it's a long video, but I wanted to kind of get it all out and give you all the information that you need so that way you can become more successful, especially as you're in the tech field, because I know that it's a lot, it's really challenging to do some of that um, as far as trying to connect with people and trying to find opportunities, especially if it's a sudden change, right? If it was an unplanned change and now you're out here. Um, so, you know, hopefully this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe below. Please send me any comments. I would love to get your feedback. If there's things that I'm missing or things that you feel that you want to have more details on, I'll try to add some, some more links in the comments below. But thank you so much. And um, hey, pay attention to this channel. Uh, we have a lot of videos on just some of the newer technologies and innovations, as well as some great insight from some of the, the, the technical leaders in this space. So um, look forward to hearing from you soon and take care. Thank you.